Well, thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you will be rewarded for knowing obscure stuff rather than the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hello, uh, I'm Kieran, and this is Harry, and we're both from Aberdeen. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Dan. This is my wife, Helen, and we're from Basildon in Essex. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Zach. This is Sophia, and we're housemates from Cardiff. And finally, couple number four. I'm Polly and this is my partner, Ian, and we're from Calderdale in West Yorkshire. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure to have you all here on Pointless. Ah, that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. A popular presenter who once hosted a show called America's Busiest City. Spoilers, turns out it was New York. Uh, it's my new Pointless friend, it's Anita Rani. Ah, uh, that was what you call in TV a sweet gig. Was it? Yeah. How long were you there? About ten days. Wow. Filmed in Central Park. Yeah. In an overnight fish market in the Bronx. Yeah. Oh, could not get that smell out for no, a while. No, you would not. Ooh. You would not. And that's the Big Apple, and you are wearing apple green. And? It's my favourite. The tassels are back. The tassels. I mean, it's like you've got a harp on each arm. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Um, yes, the tassels are back, but also what everybody wants to know is what is the biscuit of the day? Oh, it's a chocolate finger. A chocolate finger. This could take a while, though. I'm not going to dunk it, cos I don't dunk. I just suck. I did just see that, didn't I? That... <laughs> yes. Uh, now, John and Rosie got through to the jackpot round last time and they did not win it, so we are adding another £1,000 to that, which means that today's jackpot starts off at £3,250. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. Now, at the end of every round, it is our custom to eliminate the pair with the highest score. If you don't wish to be that pair, keep your scores nice and low. There's my little tip. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... Powerful women. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question concerns... People on Woman's Hour power lists. Anita. Yes, we are going to show you a board of 16 faces of people who have been included on the power lists of Radio 4's iconic programme, Woman's Hour. Since 2013, these lists have been compiled by different panels of judges who decide the most influential women in the UK. Please give us the name, the fewest of our 100 new. Thank you very much indeed, Anita. So, as Anita just said, we're going to put a board up with 16 faces on it. Sing out the name of any person on that board that you recognise. Here is that board. There we go. There we are, 16 people. I shall give you just a moment to absorb the characters on the board. Now, Kieran. Welcome back to Pointless. Thank you. <gasps> it's already your third show. I know, can you believe it? It has flown by. It has. We have to make this show count, Kieran. Well, I'll do my best. What is the name of that item of, of, of this... marvellousness? No, no, not those, although they too are marvellous. <laughs> the thing that this... binds your two little... collar points together. A little collar tip. A collar tip? Yeah. With not one, but two chains. Yeah, absolutely. Like a little smile. It's twice as extra. There you are, twice as extra. <laughs> there you are, you see? Um, uh, Kieran, tell us more about yourself. Uh, so I come from Ireland, moved here like seven years ago. Um, got a big interest in the Irish language. I went to an Irish summer school uh, for like six, seven years in my teens and learned So you speak Irish. Gaelic? Yeah. Beautifully? Gaelic, Irish. Not beautifully, but like moderately well. Good for you. Now, Kieran, who are you going to go for? Oh, jeez, I don't know. Um, oh, I'm going to go for Naomi Campbell. You're going to go for Naomi Campbell? Yeah, I've Shall we see how many of our 100 people said Naomi Campbell? <laughs> ah, <laughs> not Naomi Campbell, I'm afraid, oh, Kieran. That scores okay. you 100 points, I'm so sorry. Naomi Campbell's not on the board and we'll give you the right answers at the end at of the, the end. round, right. yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Helen, welcome back to Point. It's great to have you with us here from Basildon. Yes. Marvellous. Tell us more about yourself, Helen. Uh, well, we are parents to identical twin boys who are now 14. What are their names? Their names are Albie and Stanley. Albie, Stanley. Um, how do they uh, let people know who's who? Um, they've 
they don't really look the same to us, ah, but to well, other no, people yes. they think they do. They've Maybe got they very do. different hair, so that so helps that's, now. That's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. Now, I mean, being any kind of twin, yeah. I suppose, means you've just you've always got company. Exactly. That's a really lovely thing. But you've also always got company. You've always got company. There's that as well. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, well, I'll chew on that while you identify a low-scoring face from okay. our wall here. I think I'm going to go for Stella McCartney. Stella McCartney, says Helen. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Stella McCartney. Stella McCartney is absolutely right. Down goes Stella McCartney to ten. Very well done indeed. Yes, well spotted. Fashion designer Stella McCartney, she was on the 2013 Power List as a lifelong vegetarian. She's never used leather, feathers, skin or fur in any of her designs. Skin? I wondered about skin. Well, it's... Skin. Ooh. Skin. Skin. Well, I suppose it's the same as leather, isn't it? I suppose it is, but skin just makes it sound a bit so, skinny. So Hannibal Lecter. A bit Hannibal Lecter. Um, snake skin, crocodile skin. I see. There we I go. get it now. I get it. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Zach, welcome. Hello. To it's terrific to have you here. Tell Thank us all you. about yourself, Zach. Um, so, yeah, I'm originally from Shrewsbury, um, but I study psychology in Cardiff at the moment. How many years have you been studying there? Oh, it's been two years now, going two into years. third year. Into yeah. third year. A third of three years. I know, yeah. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zach, what do you like getting up to? Well, I'm a big movie fan. Oh, good. Um, in particular, horror movies. That's Excellent. like my jam, yeah. OK, very good indeed. Who would you like to go for on our board? Oh, I think I'm going to go for Karen Brady. You are going to go for Karen Brady? Yeah. Let us see how many of our 100 people said Karen Brady. Karen Brady is right. 100 is our high score, 10 is our low score. And 19 is where Karen Brady ends up. Yes, well done. She was also on the 2013 Powerless Sack. Uh, she's now Baroness Brady of Knightsbridge. I mean, of all the places Fancy. to be Baroness of. Fancy. Um, wow. She became director of Birmingham City FC when she was, guess how old? Five. Nearly 23. Wow. What were the rest of us doing? Well, I don't I know. know. Grr, grr. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Polly, we come to you. How lovely to have you on Pointless. Welcome. Um, tell us all about yourself. I'm a retired primary school teacher. Ah. What fills you with delight these days? I was the music specialist, so I still do a lot of music sort of things. I play in an orchestra, I sing in a choir. Very nice. What instrument do you play? I play the flute. Very nice. So which is the orchestra you play in? I play in a thing called the Calderdale Senior Citizens Orchestra. Then do you put concerts on? Yes, we do a, a Christmas concert and then we do a summer concert, yeah. Lovely. What a fabulous thing to do, Polly. Um, who are you going to go for on our board? I'm going to go for um, Tanny Gray Thompson. Tanny Gray Thompson. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said Tanny Gray Thompson. Tanny Gray Thompson, absolutely right. 100 still our high score, 10 still our low. Until now, Polly, do you see? Until now, seven for Tanny Gray Thompson. Wonderful. Fantastic answer. She was also on the first ever power list in 2013, the great celebrated Paralympian, of course. And she later joined the judging panel for the 2023 power list, which was all about women in sport. Thank you very much indeed. Anita, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Seven, the best score of the past, Polly. Very well done indeed. Polly and Ian looking very strong on the back of it. Tens where we find Helen and Dan. Then up from there to 19 where we find Zach and Sophia. And then I'm afraid it's up to 100, Kieran, where we find you and I Harry. Know. Good luck with finding a nice low score, Harry, on the next pass. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> now then, Ian, welcome. To Pointless. Tell us more about yourself. I'm a retired journalist and writer. Um, like Polly, much of my time now is spent with music. We're in a band together called the Playhouse and Gastric Gas Band. <laughs> <laughs> Gastric Gas Band? Yes. What do you play in? I play bass and ukulele, not at the same time. Very nice. String bass? No, no, no. no it's electric, a ukulele yes. bass, in fact. It's yes. a bass ukulele. Well, I got concerned about the weight of the bass guitar I was carrying around. I needed something lighter. A bit lighter. Yeah. I see. Um, Ian, can you identify these powerful women? You are on seven. If you can score 92 or less, you are through to round two. Right. I'll go for Claire Balding. 
Claire Balding says, Ian, here is your red line, nice and high. Let's see how far down the column we get with Claire Balding. It's right and it gets you through. There we are, scores you 18, taking your total up to 25. Yes, well done. Broadcaster, again, on the first ever power list in 2013. She won a BAFTA Special Award and the RTS Presenter of the Year Award for her coverage of the London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Who can forget that year? There we are. I'm surprised she's only scored 18, though. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting that to be a high scorer, but there we are. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sophia, welcome to Bind. It's great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Sophia. I am also a student from Cardiff University, currently studying media and journalism, and I'm originally from London. Very nice indeed. You also in your in your third year. Yes. There we go. What do you like getting up to when you're not working? Um, at university, I'm actually part of a dance society, so I dance. And what sort of dancing do you do? Um, mainly jazz and tap, and a bit of ballet. That's once you go out and perform. Yeah, we you... just did a show recently that me and another girl organised together, and it was pretty Fantastic. fun. Good for you. Now, Sophia, 19 is your score, which means 80 or less gets you into the next round. Who are you going to go for? Um, I think I'm going to go with Dawn French. Dawn French, says Sophia. Here is your red line, nice and high. Let's see if we can get you below that with Dawn French. Dawn French is right, and you are through. Look at that. Down goes to 51, taking your total up to a nice round 70. Yes, of course, it's Dawn French. Um, her brilliant role as, as the Vicar of Dibley, uh, initially she was a bit apprehensive about taking it on, but it was Joy Carol Wallace, one of the first female vicars ordained in the UK, who helped her change her mind. She was inspired by another woman who actually did the job to take very, on the role. There very you go. good. Thank you very much indeed. Anita, now Dan. Welcome back to Pointless for your second show. Um, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, so as uh, Helen said, we've got 14-year-old uh, twin boys, um, so they keep us very busy. Yeah. Um, but I also love to learn about uh, military history, um, mostly 20th century. Have you done any of those battlefield tours? I have, yes. I've been to France and Belgium to do several battlefield tours. And it suddenly all comes alive, doesn't it? Yeah, they're very interesting places to go, very sombre. Um, but yeah. yeah it's, um, they're, they're great to visit. Good, good. Now, Dan, you're on 10. 89 or less gets you into round two. Who would you like to go for? Yeah, I, I know the bottom left. I, I know her surname, but I cannot think of her first name. So I'm going to go for Dina Asher-Smith. Dina Asher-Smith. Let us see how many of our 100 people said that. Here is your red line, Dina Asher-Smith. It's right and you're through. Well done, Dan. down to two, which I think is the best score of the whole round so far. Very well done indeed, taking your total up to 12. Fantastic work. Yes, well done. The sprinter was on the 2023 Power List, which celebrated women who've made a game-changing contribution in the world of sport. At the 2019 World Athletics Championship, she won a gold and two silvers, making her the first Briton to win three medals at a world championship. Officially a superhero. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Harry. Welcome back to Pointless. Oh, I hate to say this, but once again, I'm speaking to you with a red number on the podium in front of you, which means you are the high scorers. I'm so sorry. Once again, we're going to put that out of our minds. Tell us more about yourself. So I'm 31, and two fun facts about me include the fact that my name means a destroyer of sorrow in Sanskrit. This is good. The second one is that I have an irrational fear of ringing phones. Of ringing phones? <laughs> Really? I'm so, like, what's so important that you couldn't have texted me and such? <laughs> oh, so you don't want to talk to anyone? <laughs> no. uh -huh. I see. What about vibrating phones? It's exactly uh, it's the same. Exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> it fits yeah. into the same irrational fear. Um, very good. Now, Harry, there you are on 100. Do you feel like talking us through the board? Um, I think it's Beyonce and then Joanna Lumley, there's Adele, Margaret Thatcher, but I'm going to go with Caroline Lucas. You're going to go for Caroline Lucas in the top right there. Let us see how many of our 100 people said Caroline Lucas. There's no red line for you, as I'm afraid you are the high scorers. Caroline Lucas is right. 
And down goes Caroline Lucas to two. That's a fantastic score. Very well done indeed, Harry. That takes your total up to 102. Yes, she was number one on the 2020 Power List, which had Our Planet as the theme. She was the first Green Party MP in England and Wales when elected to the constituency of Brighton Pavilion in 2010. Well done, but I'm wiping away two <laughs> tears, one for each of you. <laughs> Let's clear up the board. Um, you are absolutely right, Beyonce, she scored 50. Then we've got Zaha Hadid, the architect, got one. Olympic swimmer, Alice Deering, pointless answer. Joanna Lumley scored 39. Adele, of course, 69. Shami Chakrabarti got three. Carol Ann Duffy, one. Margaret Thatcher got 66, and that is Doreen Lawrence for one point, the mother of Stephen Lawrence. Thank you very much indeed, Anita. That brings us to the end of our first round, and it means we have to say goodbye to our first pair of the afternoon, Harry and Kieran. I'm afraid this is where we part company with you. It's been great having you Thank on you. the Pleasure show. Thank you so much for playing, Harry. I'm sorry we never got to see you beyond round one, though, uh, but it's been great having you here. Harry and Kieran, brilliant. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. We are very well done, everybody. We have arrived at the rarefied giddy heights of round two. And Dan and Helen, our lowest combined scorers in that round. Dan, our lowest individual scorer in that round. So very well done on the near podium. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... International travel. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns three-letter airport codes. Anita. Yes, we are going to give you six definitions on each board of words that are also three-letter IATA airport codes. We'll also show you the country the airport's in and the first letter of the word and airport code. Please give us the answer you think is the most obscure. And if you're playing along at home, good luck. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, I think this is going to be fun. Mm. Uh, we are looking, therefore, for the three-letter words described by these clues that are also airport codes. And here is our first board of six. An amusing joke. United States. G. A spherical body found either in astronomy or as part of a monarch's regalia. Sweden. O. When in a difficult or funny situation, this type of smile might creep across a face. United Kingdom. W. A colloquial term for a male parent. Vietnam, D. Pastry-based foodstuff that comes in sweet or savoury varieties. United States, P. And a soft murmuring sound made by a dove or pigeon. Benin, C. There we are. Helen. I wasn't sure about this when it came up, but I'm relieved. You're there now. I'm OK. OK, um, good. I think I'm going to go for the type of smile as rye. Rye for the third one down. Let's see how many of our 100 people said rye. Rye is absolutely right. 33. Very good, yes. Um, Westray Airport in the Orkneys. Orkney lays claim to the world's shortest flight at 1.7 miles. It's a two-minute flight between Westray and Papa Westray. And if the winds are right, you can do it in a minute. Thank you very much indeed, Anita. Now, Zach. Yes. What are you going to go for? Oh, I think I'm going to go for the second one, and I think it's Orb. Orb. Yeah. Orb, says Zach. Let's see how many of our 100 said orb. Orb is right. 33 is the only score we have at the moment. And then there's 45 for orb. Not bad. Yeah, well done. It is orb. Uh, that's uh, Örebro Airport, serving one of Sweden's most popular cities. Thank you very much indeed, Anita. Now then, Ian, you are the last person to have this board. Would you like to talk us through it? I think the top one may be gag. The Vietnam one may be dad. The pastry-based food stuff, a pie, and I'll go for the bottom one, coo. Coo, says Ian. Let's see how many of our 100 said coo. Coo is right. 45 is our high score. 33 is our low. There we are. 67 for coo. Mm. Uh, 
who is Cotonou Kayeong Airport in Benin. Let's have a look at the rest of the board. The first one is GAG, that's the airport code for Gage Airport in Oklahoma, that scored 50. And then, yep, it was DAD, that's Da Nang Airport in Vietnam, 58 for that. And, yep, yeah, it's PI, that is St. Pete International Airport in Florida, and that scored 63, so quite high scoring round, really, isn't it? I know, and um, poor old Ian, the one you chose, ended up scoring more than all the others. I'm sorry about that. I thought coup was a great answer. But anyway, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. 33, Helen. Very well done, indeed. Helen and Dan. 45 is where we find Zach and Sophia. And then 67 is where we find Ian and Polly. Polly, you get the new board. So see if you can find the lovely low-scoring answer on that. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more clues to three-letter words that are also airport codes on the board. And here they come. A breed of dog, such as Frank in the Men in Black film series. Australia, P. A term that might be used to express horror, shock or surprise. United States, E. An informal term for a bodily waste product. Brazil, P. A card that can be either high or low, depending on the game played. Spain, A. A crucial ingredient used in making tofu, an Asian sauce or a milk alternative. United Kingdom, S. And French word for life. Austria, V. There we are. Polly. I think I know most of them, but like Ian, it's just trying to find the one that the least people knew. I'll go for the bottom one and say V. V. Yes. Indeed. Uh, there you are. You're on 67. You're the high scorers at the moment, so you don't get a red line. But let's see how far down the column we get with V. V is right. Well done, Polly. 37 for V. Takes your total up to 104. Yep, uh, Vienna Airport. There is an English word, vi, as in to compete or struggle with someone, but that word itself is derived from French. Envier. Thank you very much indeed. Sophia, you are on 45. We're looking at a score of 58 or less from you to get you into the head-to-head. -head. Um, I think I might go with the first and go pug. Pug, says Sophia. Here's your red line. Shall we see if we can get you below that with pug? Pug is right. And it gets you through. Ooh, just perfect economy. Look at that, 56, taking your total up to 101. Yeah, Port Augusta Airport, a small airport serving the city of Port Augusta in South Australia. Good fact here, because, you know, it's going to be out in the middle of nowhere. The airport serves as a base for the Royal Flying Doctor service. It also conducts fly-in, fly-out flights, which take workers to remote areas for their jobs, mostly in mines in the north of the state. Thank you very much I've just indeed. taken a plane to work. In fact, you don't have to imagine, because that's how you get here. <laughs> <laughs> I literally live a mile and a half away. No, minute. When the wind's in the right direction, it can take <laughs> me less than a minute. Uh, now then, uh, Dan, you are on 33, 70 or less gets you through to the next round. Would you like to talk us through the board? Yeah, I think the second one is uh, eek. Uh, the third one could be poo or pee. Um, the fourth one is ace and the fifth one is soy. Um, I think I'll go for... Eek. Eek. You're completely right about the bodily waste, by the way. That could be either. Um, anyway, here is your red line. Can we get you below that with eek? Eek is right. There we are. Very well done. You are through to the head-to-head -head with room to spare. 26 is what that scores you, taking your total up to 59. Yeah, good answer. Eek Airport is in Alaska. Eek serves the tiny city of Eek. The name of the city is derived from a native Yupik word, meaning... Two eyes. There we yeah. are. Eek. There we are. Thank you very much. Oh, now what about these other ones? Should we clear it up? Oh, yeah, I hadn't even considered that it might be P. Uh, the answer is poo. The abbreviation is for Posas de Caldas. That's 46. Ace, you're absolutely right there, Dan. And that would have scored 73. That's uh, Lanzarote Airport. But it's named after the Arrecife. And again, you were right. It is soy. And that would have got 58. And that's for Stronze Airport in the Orkneys. 
Thank you very much indeed. Anita, that brings us to the end of our second round. It means we have to say goodbye to our second pair of the afternoon. Polly and Ian, I'm afraid this is where we part company, but only for a little bit. We'll see you again next time. Look forward to that very much. Meantime, thank you very much, Polly and Ian. <laughs> but for our two remaining pairs, it is now time for the head-to-head. Huge congratulations, Helen and Dan, Sophia and Zach. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £3,250. Here's our chance to put even more money into that jackpot by seeing if you can find a couple of pointless answers. So here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many salad ingredients as they could. Anita. Mm, you'll see six options. Four of these are foods that might typically be included in a salad, two of which are scoring and two are pointless, and two are not food items at all. £250 in the jackpot for each pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed. So can you find the two pointless salad ingredients among these six? And in our salad bowl we have endive, mizuna, farro, Katori, Marina, and pea shoots. There we are. Does anyone know anything? Feel free to shout out. I mean, pea shoots. Pea yeah, shoots. that sounds yeah, right. That I, mean. I, I don't think that would be pointless. No. But I yeah. don't know any of Not the others. True. Okay, so I'm going to come to you, Helen and Dan. What would you like to nominate? Mizuna. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That. Yeah. Mizuna. Yeah. yeah Shall exactly. we see what happens with Mizuna? Is that a pointless salad ingredient? I like the sound of Mizuna. Well done, Mizuna is a pointless salad ingredient. Now, Sabir and Zach, can you find the other pointless salad ingredient to we'll go with try. it? Um, I have a vibe about farro. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to go farro. You're going to go farro? Yeah. Should we see if farro is a pointless salad ingredient? Wow, it is a salad ingredient. And it's a pointless salad ingredient as well. Very well done indeed. Superb work. Wonderful. Pea shoots, you got, obviously, and you said it wouldn't be a pointless answer. You're right, that would have scored two. And katori is not a salad ingredient. It's a type of small bowl used in Indian households. What about the other two? Well, an endive, I know, is yeah. salad ingredient. It's yes, delicious. Yes, absolutely. Slightly bitter leaves. Exactly, and that would have scored one. And Marina van der Vloot is the lead singer of the 90s band Salad. There we go. Lovely. I don't even remember a 90s band called Salad, do you? No. No. I thought I was quite up on my 90s bands as no. well. We'll have to listen yeah, to well. them later. Yeah, we certainly may. Uh, well, well done. You managed to find two pointless answers. So let's just sit back in satisfaction while we watch £500 add themselves to the jackpot. <laughs> Look at that. Taking the total up to £3,750. But who'll be playing for it? Well, let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot and you are now allowed to confer. Best of luck to both pairs. Here is our first question and it is all about... European saints. Anita. We're going to show you images of five places in Europe, the names of which are all Saint something. We'll give you a clue as to where they are, the first and last letters of the remaining words in their names and blank spaces for the remaining letters in each answer. The saint may be pronounced in the local language. Please give us the name of the place the fewest of our 100 new. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five European saints, and here they are. A, St. P. G, Russia. B, St. T. Z, France. C, St. A. S, Scotland. D, St. M. Z, Switzerland. And E, St. P. R. P. T. Guernsey. There we are. Now, Helen and Dan, you get to go first. Um, yeah, I think I know all of them, but do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to go for D, uh, St. Moritz. St. Moritz or St. Moritz, uh, say Helen and Dan. Now, Sophia and Zach, do you want to talk us through that board? A, I think, is St. Petersburg. B is St. Tunis. Yeah. yeah. Um, C, I don't, don't, I don't know. know clue. And E, no, mm. no, no clue either. 
Should we do B? Yeah. yeah. I think we'll go B, Tunis. St Tunis. OK, so we have got St Samaritz and we have St Tunis. Uh, Helen and Dan went St Moritz for D. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. St Moritz, absolutely right. Down it goes to 49. Meanwhile, Sophia and Zach have gone for St Tunis in France for B. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 said it. No, oh <laughs> I'm afraid not St Tunis, which means Helen and Dan, very well done. After one question, you're up 1-0. It's not St Tunis, gang. It's Saint-Tropez. Oh. Ah. Oh. No, okay. And that would have scored 65. So even if you had got it, you wouldn't have won the points. Um, you were right about St Petersburg. That would have scored 66. And Sander, C. St Andrews. Correct. That's the view of the golf course. Would have got 51. And the last one. I'm guessing that's St Peter Port. It is. St Peter Port. That's where Victor Hugo lived after being exiled from France. And it's where he wrote Les Mis. 31. Splendid. Thank you very much indeed. Now, here comes your second question. Sphere and Zach, you get to answer it first. But you've got to win this one to stay in the game. So good luck. Our second question today is all about... Books cut off at the letter B, Anita. We're going to give you five book titles, but we've cut each title off just before the first instance of the letter B occurs. We've given you the authors and years of publication. Please complete the titles and tell us the book title that the fewest of our 100 people worked out. Thank you very much indeed. So let's reveal our five book titles cut off in their prime. And here they are. We have got Northanger A, Jane Austen, 1817. The Un... Milan Kundera, 1984. Purple He, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, 2003. The Midnight Lie, Matt Haig, 2020. And To Kill a Mocking, Harper Lee, 1960. There we are. Sophia and Zach, it's over to you. Um, I feel like. I need the book To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, we can't do the laugh. It could be um, <laughs> Midnight. Maybe purple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think we're going to take a bit of a stab and go purple hibiscus. Purple hibiscus, say yeah. Sophia and Zach. Now then, Helen and Dan, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Mm. Mm. Not really. I think we only know the top one and the bottom one, though so we're, we're going to go for Northanger Abbey. Okay, Northanger Abbey. So we have purple hibiscus versus Northanger Abbey. Sophia and Zach went purple hibiscus for Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Let's see if that is right. It is right. Very well done indeed. Purple hibiscus. Down it goes to 11. Meanwhile, Helen and Dan have gone for Northanger Abbey. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Northanger Abbey is absolutely right. That takes us down to 34. And it means well done, Sphere and Zach. After two questions, you're back in the game. It's one all. Can you guess the next one? The unbearable lightness of being. Absolutely. And that's the lowest scorer at three. Then Matt Haig's book, The Midnight Library. Library. That was 22. And then everyone all together now. Bird. Exactly. And the highest scorer, To Kill a Mockingbird, 88. Thank you very much indeed. Now, here comes your third question. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about... Mud, <laughs> Anita. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give you five clues now to things related to mud in some way. Please give us your most obscure answer. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five mud clues, and here they come. Title of the 1974 UK Christmas number one single for the band Mud. US state that precedes mud pie to give the name of a traditional dessert. The Great Mosque of Jenne, constructed from mud, is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site in this African country. Someone that does not like doing anything new or fun can be described as this object in the mud. And the Flanders and Swan tune, sometimes known as the Mud Song or Mud Glorious Mud, is about this mammal. There we are. Over to you, Helen and Dan. Mm. Go on. You think that one? Yeah, go on. Go okay, it. we're going to go for the top one and say lonely this Christmas. Lonely this Christmas, say Helen and Dan. Now then, Sophia and Zach, do you want to talk us through that board? 
I don't know if we can, to much. be honest. No. I feel like, is it a Kentucky mud pie? The third one would be a guess. It's a stick in the mud. And then maybe like a pig or something. Sounds... I've not heard. Okay. You. We'll go Tennessee mud pie. So Tennessee, Tennessee mud yeah. pie. So we have Lonely This Christmas and Tennessee mud pie. Helen and Dan went for Lonely This Christmas. How many of our 100 said that for the mud Christmas hit single? Lonely This Christmas is right. Very well done. Down. That goes to 10. That's a great score. Very well done indeed. Meanwhile, Sophia and Zach have gone for a Tennessee mud pie. Let's see if that is right. No. Bad luck. Not a Tennessee mud pie. Helen and Dan, very well done. After three questions, you're through to the final. 2-1. Yeah, not a Tennessee mud pie. It's a Mississippi mud pie. You knew it, Zach. Yeah. You knew it, was, it. It was in there somewhere. <laughs> and that would have scored 51. I'm sorry about that. Although I'm very happy that you're going to be back. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next one, it's Marley. That was the best answer on the board. That's a pointless answer. And you were right, it is stick for the object in the mud, 43. And it's not a pig, it's a hippopotamus, 15. Thank you very much indeed. So that means the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Sophia and Zach, it is you. But it's good news, as Anita yeah. just said, because it means we'll see you again next time. We'll look forward to that. Yeah, but thank you so much we'll for do. playing and playing so well. Thank Sophia you. and Zach. To Helen and Dan, though, it is now time for the pointless final. Well, congratulations, Helen and Dan. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win the pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £3,750. It'd be lovely if we can send that jackpot home with you. What would you like to see come up this round? We have very differing specialist subjects. This is perfect. So yeah. it could be history, bit of geography. sport, bit of geography, reality TV. 80s action films. 80s films, <laughs> 80s music, or perfect. darts. Perfect. Always better that way, to have a broad base of it. Exactly. Objects. Your four choices today are... The Duke of Wellington, back-to-back -back Wimbledon champions, Aretha Franklin, 2023 acting Oscar winners. What do we think? The Oscars one could be not necessarily people that won it in 2023, but film other films they've been in. Yeah, possibly. Or yeah. Wimbledon. I mean, films, I think we've got a shot for both of us. Wimbledon would be all you. <sighs> Let's go for films. No offence to Aretha or the Duke of Wellington. We'll go Oscar winners. 2023 acting Oscar winners it is. OK, yes. We are looking for any feature film which has been released in the cinema or on a streaming platform for which either of the following has received an acting credit. Michelle Yeoh, who won the Best Actress Oscar at the Academy Awards ceremony held in 2023, or Brendan Fraser, who won Best Actor Oscar at the same ceremony. This is according to IMDb and is correct as of June 2023. Very best of luck to you and to those of you playing along at home. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed, Anita. So, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. If you can find three pointless answers, we'll throw in a £500 bonus. Are you ready? Yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I, I don't know any films that Michelle Yeoh is in. Oh, she was in um, Crash and Psychic Dragon. Oh, I thought that. Was bit. Quite... She was in Guys in the Galaxy 2, but it was like a cameo. I don't know if she be credited for it. Well, that's worth a um, risk. Brenda Fraser, Frieda. California Man, Brenda Fraser, yeah. and George of the Jungle. George Jungle. Was there a second one? No, they've got the Mummy Returns. Mm, I don't really he was know. He in that whale, wasn't he? he yeah, won but the that's what he's just won the Oscar for, isn't it? That um, won't be pointless. I can't think of any other films he's been in. <sighs> Did he do a voice? Has he been a voice artist in anything? So they're always good. Oh, possibly, yeah. But I don't know. Did he do? Like ants or anything like that? No, or bugs like that? I don't think, I don't he, think did. he did. No. Well, why don't we go for California Man? Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And maybe George of the Jungle. Yeah, 10 seconds. I don't for think that. it'll be. Okay, let's go for them. We'll put that first. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, it sounds like you're happy, so we can stop the clock. It's always exciting to stop the clock. Um, what three answers can you give me? Uh, we're going for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Guardians yep, for Michelle. For Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. Yep. California Man. California for Man. Brendan Fraser. 
and mm. George of the Jungle. And George of the Jungle, yeah. again, for Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? California Man. Maybe California, California Man. Man will put last. Least yeah. likely to be pointless. George of the Jungle. George of the Jungle and then Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. 2 goes into the middle. Yeah. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. Well, we have got George of the Jungle, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and California Man. Well, £3,750 is up for grabs if one of these turns out to be pointless. Um, what would you like to do with that if you won it? Oh, spend it on a nice holiday, I think. Definitely oh, a, a holiday. holiday. Yeah. yeah. We've not been, nice. not been abroad for a long time, so that would be nice. That would be a really yeah. nice thing. Just Anything else you all. want to add to that, Helen? I don't want to do anything sensible. <laughs> what a good idea. It. Blow it on a holiday. What a good idea. Yeah. OK, well, very, very best of luck. In the first instance, we were looking for Brendan Fraser films. You've gone for George of the Jungle. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Is it pointless for £3,750? George of the Jungle, absolutely right. Wonder if this might be pointless. Oh, Down we go with George of the Jungle through the 20s oh. into the teens. Still, oh, 12. OK, George of the Jungle scoring you 12. So we now move on to your next answer, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. In this case, we're looking for Michelle Yeoh films. Now, there was some doubt. You weren't entirely sure if she was credited. No, mm. I think she might be a cameo. She's a cameo. OK, well, let's find out. Might it be right? Oh, no, it is right. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Michelle Yeoh absolutely credited in, in that. Might it now be pointless, therefore? £3,750 riding on it. If it is, still we go down. Still going down. You've done it in that. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 with a pointless answer. Oh and God. it has just won you £3,750. <laughs> Brilliantly played. Yeah, uh, Michelle Yeoh does have a cameo appearance. She plays a letter, a god, one of the ravagers. And California Man would have scored you two. Don't matter. Took a punt. So let's look at some more of the pointless answers, starting with Michelle Yeoh films. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, where she played Ying Nan. Sunshine, The Lady, she played Burmese leader Aung San Suu. And The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon. Emperor, which also starred Brendan Fraser. Um, there were loads more pointless answers here. In fact, every single one of her films was a pointless answer, apart from Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Crazy Rich Asians, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Last Christmas, Memoirs of a Geisha, and the Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies, and Yes, Madam. Moving on to Brendan Fraser films, here are some pointless answers for you. You could have had Crash, Dudley Do Right, Extraordinary Measures, Journey to the Centre of the Earth, the scoring answers here were The Mummy, The Whale, George of the Jungle, The Mummy Returns, Bedazzled, Dogfight, California Man, another one you said, Gods and Monsters, The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor and The Quiet American. And very well done if you got the pointless answers at home. Thank you very much indeed, Anita, and thanks once again to our winning players, Helen and Dan, who take away today's jackpot of £3,750. Very well done. Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Anita. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>